Hello and welcome to the Irish Aesthete. Previously I was telling you about the family background of Lady Caroline Stuart, who in 1778 married Irishman John Dawson. His father William had two years previously been made Viscount Carlo, and John would in due turn be made the first Earl of Port Arlington in 1785. Coming to Ireland, the couple lived in County Leash, in a house built by John's grandfather, Ephraim Dawson, and called Dawson's Court. Sadly, we know very little about this building, since it would be demolished at some point in the late 18th or early 19th century. But this drawing of the house and surrounding parkland give us some idea at least of its scale and setting. Following demolition, only a few items appear to have been retained from Dawson Court, including a pair of chimney pieces, one of which is now in a former bedroom at the house's replacement, Emo Court. The scale and design of the chimney piece suggests the older house may have been designed by Richard Castle. Also, an extant folly in the grounds, while inspired by William Kent's Worcester Lodge at Badminton, also seems to indicate that Castle might have been the architect here. John and Caroline appear to have been extremely happy together, and they went on to have nine children before his premature death in 1798. They shared many interests, and both were talented artists. This engraving of Kildare Cathedral, based on a drawing made by John Dawson, demonstrates what a fine draftsman he was. But understandably, Lady Caroline missed her family in England, and she found life in County Leash quite isolated. So she took to writing to her sister Louisa from what she sometimes called her exile here. And the surviving letters give us a very vivid account of country house existence in late 18th century Ireland. Caroline was fortunate to find a great friend in one of her closest neighbours, the beautiful Selina Brook, first Viscountess de Vesey. Here she is with her sister Letitia. The latter, incidentally, was the great-grandmother of Charles Stuart Parnell, having married Sir John Parnell in 1774. A few years before Caroline came to Ireland, the de Vesey's had embarked on building themselves a new house on their estate at Abbey Leakes. The design for this was supplied by fashionable London architect James Wyatt. In September 1778, John and Caroline Dawson paid their first visit to the property, from where she informed her sister Louisa that not only was she quite in love with Lady de Vesey, but also with her host's style of living. It is entirely without form, she said. Everybody doing as they please, and always a vast number of people in the house. Lady Napton, who, by the way, was Lord de Vesey's widowed mother, lives with them and seems no restraint upon anybody. She is so good-humoured. We were about six or seven ladies and as many gentlemen, divided into different parties about the room, some working, some reading, some playing cards, and the room being very large and very full, it had a most comfortable appearance. It was as well that everybody got on so famously, because, according to Caroline, as it rained most of the time I was there, I did not see much of the grounds, but the park is not laid out, as they have employed all their time and money in making a comfortable house first, which I think is the most sensible plan. Soon it was time for the Dawsons to return to their own home, but plans were already made for a return visit there by the de Vesey's. Caroline was delighted that she'd made such a good first friend in Ireland. The following month, the couple went to Dublin, as John was a local MP and had to attend Parliament. While they were in the capital, they paid a visit to Carton in County Kildare. Carton was the seat of the Duke and Duchess of Leinster. William Fitzgerald, the second Duke, was a large, rather dull man who seems to have been content to do relatively little. He wasn't nearly as interesting or attractive a character as his younger brother, Lord Edward Fitzgerald, who was remembered for his part in the unsuccessful 1798 rebellion. But the Duke did do one very smart thing. He married an heiress. She was Amelia Olivia St George, only daughter of St George Usher St George, Lord St George, who had likewise married an heiress, Elizabeth, only child of Christopher Dominic of Dublin. 
As a result of this marriage, the Duke was able to pay off many of the debts incurred by his late father, as well as undertake a number of building projects on his homes. These included Leinster House in Dublin, in which he now fitted out a picture gallery needed to accommodate all the works of art his wife had inherited from her father. Today used as the Senate Chamber of the Irish Dáil, the gallery was designed by James Wyatt, self-same architect as had been responsible for the de Vesey's house at Abbey Leaks. Wyatt also produced designs to make over the Leinster's country seat at Carton, but these were never executed. When Caroline visited in October 1778, she told her sister Louisa that she found the house more agreeable than I expected, though I don't think I should like to stay long. But for a couple of days it will do very well, as there is a good deal to see. The Leinsters lived in a very grand fashion, as Caroline reported. Everything seems to go on in great state here, she informed Louisa. The Duchess appears in a sack and hoop and diamonds in the afternoon, French horns playing at every meal, and such quantities of plate, etc., that one would imagine oneself in a palace, and there are servants without end. The stay at Carton was not as successful as that at Abbey Leaks. Caroline never really warmed to the Duchess, and the dull Duke was inclined to fall asleep after meals and snore loudly in the drawing room. But while she was there, Caroline was taken to neighbouring Castletown. And in the next episode, I'll tell you about her impressions of that house. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much for watching The Irish Estate. Goodbye. Thank you.